Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Brother Not Brother. And in today's episode, we're going to be playing a game show with Kelby, and we have a special guest. We almost forgot to say hello, huh, Brecklin? Brecklin. Say hi. Say hi to the camera. <laughs> hello. Yeah, you don't know that there's anyone behind that camera, but you are here, and thank you for coming. We're going to be playing a game called Can You Live Without It? Oregon Edition. We're going <coughs> to... Not Oregon, the state, because some people feel like they can live without that state, but... Oregon. Oregon, as in in your body. And so I'm going to give Kelby, I've done some research, and I'm going to give Kelby some body parts that he may or may not be able to live without, and he has to try and guess them right. Are Let's you ready? It. Yeah. You, you are pretty medically inclined. You work in the medical field I in do. general. Yeah. Um, you, you love watching those medical videos on Facebook. Surger, surgery. Surgery videos. Oh my gosh. They're actually kind of interesting to see. I Every once in a while I see when you share them, I'm like... Okay, I'll click the whole, like, it's got the blur <laughs> out <laughs> stuff. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go through and hopefully find out if we can live without certain parts of our bodies. I watched House, so I'm pretty sure I got this. You got this? Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and start with the first one. Can you live with just half of your brain Ooh. removing an entire hemisphere? He's got half a brain. If you had half a brain, do you think... Can live well, a relatively mm. normal life. Well, I've done pretty good so far. <laughs> um, well, going from okay. that nature, medically or I, I, scientifically, from what I know about the brain, mm -hmm. I think you can, but you would not be able to live a normal life. So, you don't think you can live a normal life without <coughs> a brain? No, you you you'd be very 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 handicapped. Did you actually? She's just ripping her socks off. <laughs> Actually, you can live with just half a brain. Um, so I got and that it right, would be I, I no, no, no. Else. It would you can learn to live a normal life. Really? Yeah. So I got I got half a point then. Yep. Basically, okay. Cut to our friend Hank from SciShow. He's gonna explain. Of all of the organs in the human body to lose, even partially, you would think that the brain would be a total deal breaker. I mean, it controls or coordinates basically everything else. But it turns out that sometimes it's better to live with just one hemisphere. Half a brain, in other words. Like when people have a kind of epilepsy where seizures stem from one side of the brain. This can happen with some developmental brain disorders or with rare conditions like when one brain hemisphere is abnormally large. One-sided seizures are often difficult to treat and they can be debilitating. So sometimes doctors recommend a hemispherectomy, the removal of some or all of the half of the brain that's affected. Oh, it's a very rare, extreme watch. operation, obviously, but when it's successful, it can result in a relatively normal life. Huh. So, interesting. yeah, it's basically for those that have epilepsy and you can learn to walk again. You can use both hemispheres, well, both sides of your bodies with the You're just reprogramming your brain. It just has to relearn and I like that. better if you go. Interesting. I learned something. Right? Okay. Next question. Can you live without your kidneys? Removing both kidneys. Well, kidneys. You know, in all honesty, I really don't know what the kidneys do. Yeah? Yeah. But, um, I would say no. You can, live without, you can live without one of them, but not both. And the answer is... Each of your kidneys is made up of more than a million filtering units called nephrons, which remove waste and excess fluid from the blood. If that doesn't seem like too important to you, just imagine like what would happen to your house if you couldn't take out the trash for a couple months. In your body, increased levels of waste can cause vomiting, diarrhea, dehydration. The whole body can swell, increasing blood pressure and impairing breathing. And chemical imbalances from improper fluid management can lead to serious issues like bone and muscle loss. Ultimately, kidney failure can be fatal. Yet, you only really need one of your kidneys. Yes! <laughs> two for two so far. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so you do need one kidney. You do need one kidney. That's correct. All right. Can you live with only one lung? Yes, you can. Really? You, you know. Uh, I have a coworker. Oh, really? She had a lung removed. Isn't that crazy? And she lives a pretty normal life. <laughs> You're right. So you can live with just one lung, 
And uh, here's Hank to tell us more. Breathing is another thing that's kind of essential for human life, so you would think that losing a lung would cause a lot of problems. But you can get by just fine with just one lung. Lung diseases like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, cancer, or tuberculosis can wreck someone's lung tissues. So in some cases, part of a lung or even the entire lung will be removed in a surgery called a pneumonectomy. When one lung is removed, the extra space allows other organs to shift a bit, giving the remaining lung some more room to expand. Studies have shown that in some animals like dogs and rats, the remaining lung can actually grow new alveoli, the little sac where gas exchange happens. It's thought that children who get a pneumonectomy might also do this since their lungs are still developing. But in adults, it's more likely that the alveoli just stretch and expand a little to move more air through. Ultimately, one lung is able to do about 70 to 80 percent of what two lungs can, and that is usually enough. What? Can you believe it? Your lungs can do 70 to 80 percent with just one lung. Well, not only did I know that just because my coworker, uh -huh. but most of my medical experience is it's with in, it's respiratory, respiratory, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next one. Can you live without your liver? Removing the whole liver. Uh, no. No? Let me explain why. F at least what I think. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you need your liver. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, it's, it's, the liver's our filter. Uh-huh. That's anything bad. What the kidneys were. No, oh, I thought the liver is. I don't know. Yeah, the liver is, I thought. But you can remove 90% of it because mm -hmm. that small 10% can regrow. Uh huh. It takes time, but it can regrow. And the answer is no. You do have to have part of your liver. You're right! Bam! And here's Hank to tell us all about it. Your liver does a lot. It processes nutrients, yep. detoxifies your blood, and produces bile, a fluid that helps digestion. Nah. And yet, while you can't have your whole liver removed, you can donate more than a half of it to help someone whose Please. liver is diseased. What's really amazing, though, is that unlike your other organs, your liver will grow back. Your liver is made of hepatocytes, specialized cells that don't actively replicate, that is, until some are missing. When a piece of liver is removed, hepatocytes reactivate and start replicating again, growing new liver cells. Liver regeneration is so efficient that you can lose up to 65% of your liver, and it'll grow back within a year. Just a quarter of a liver can become a completely new liver in a transplant recipient. Isn't that crazy? It can grow back. It's pretty cool, huh? You just need a quarter of your liver. Yep. So you weren't quite right with the 10%. No, I'm just, that was just yeah. an example, but yeah. Yeah, so. you're right. You do not... You, you don't need you, the whole entire liver. You don't need the whole thing, liver. but you do need a liver. Yep. Next question. <clears throat> Can you live without a stomach at all? I'm talking about not like uh, doing a lap band or gastric bypass. I'm talking about connecting your intestine to your throat. <laughs> Goes straight from your the throat to, I think it's the small intestine. Is that the first one? Uh, Dr. Kelby? I think it's large first and then small. Well, it connects directly to your intestines. Can you live without your stomach itself? No. Because here's my reason is the stomach is what breaks down everything, mm -hmm. which will help us get all the nutrients that we need. Mm -hmm. If we were just to eat the food, go straight into our intestines and out mm -hmm. our anuses, yeah, uh, you're, looking at, you're looking at a human centipede. Like, it's just kind of gross. <laughs> so, well, no, you, I think... You need it. Yes, you can live without a stomach. What? You can. However, <coughs> so here's Hank to tell us Excuse all me. about it. Your stomach has to be tough enough to mush around your meals in gastric acid before passing them along to the small intestine, so it's fairly resilient. But it can still become impaired or diseased to the point that the patient needs surgery to redirect the digestive tract around their stomach or to remove part of it. And in some cases, surgeons perform a total gastrectomy to take out the whole thing and just connect the esophagus directly to the small intestine. Oddly enough, this doesn't really affect the overall process of digestion, since most of it occurs in the small intestine anyway. But yeah. since there is no stomach to store food in, patients often need to eat smaller, more frequent meals. Yeah. And he goes into more detail about that. Very interesting. Well, Isn't I, that cool? I, I learned something. <laughs> Learning something every day. Now, Kelby, our final one. You've gotten all except for one correct today. Uh-huh. Actually, two, right? No. That's my you first You said one. the brain, you, we wouldn't live a normal life. But I did say you can live. Yeah. So I got that one right. I'll give it to you. 
This last one is a spleen. Can you live without a spleen? Yes. Brecklin, can you live without your spleen? Spleen is completely useless. The answer is yes. That's right. We don't actually know what a spleen does, and here's Hank to tell us all about it. Hi, Brecklin. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. She's almost standing, you guys. She can almost stand. Mm. Well, she is standing, see? Woo! Nice job, girl! The spleen, which sits to the left of the stomach, is also a pretty useful organ. It's involved in filtering blood, including removing and breaking down old red blood cells, and it's one of the places where infection-fighting white blood cells are produced. But when bad things happen to someone's abdomen, like if they get shot or stabbed or in a motorcycle accident like my father-in-law, the spleen can rupture. That's super dangerous because it can result in internal bleeding that could be fatal. The spleen can also cause problems if it becomes enlarged from an infection, because the swelling can trap and destroy healthy blood cells, leading to anemia. In those cases, doctors will do a splenectomy, where they remove part or all of the spleen. It's typically considered a safe procedure, but because of its role in the immune system, people without a spleen are more prone to infections, especially from certain bacteria. So for people without spleens, it's important for them to boost their immune system by taking preventative antibiotics and staying vaccinated. Isn't that cool? That's pretty cool. So essentially, you, uh... <laughs> Come here. Come here, Brooklyn. Come on. Come on. That's, there you go. There you go. Oh my goodness, you are so good at walking. Ah! So the spleen essentially is just helping your immune system, but you can live entirely without it. Yeah. You just have to be careful around people that are sick and whatnot, and make sure you keep up to date on your shots and whatnot. <laughs> Speaking up. Speaking up. <laughs> Kelby's just getting over one. Well, way to go, Kelby. You got all except for one correct on this. Stomach. The medical guru here. The only reason I knew these is because I watched this video. Go to SciShow.com, uh, let's see, YouTube.com slash SciShow. Subscribe, check out this video. This is called There's Seven Organs You Could Totally Live Without. This is what we referenced in this video. It's a great one. I think that's going to be it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm surprised that I did so well. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm confident. So I. <laughs> this is the cutest thing in the world. That's my daughter. <laughs> Brecklin, can you say don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe? Can you tell everyone subscribe to our YouTube channel? YouTube.com slash brother not brother. All of our social media links. Over <laughs> right over here. And in the meantime, we'll see you guys. Say bye. Bye bye. 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 <laughs>